is um, if we have been allowing people to go on, and especially me too, I need to be quiet, and, and you only really have eight to 10 minutes, right, to speak. So our next person is going to be Dean Preston. And Dean, Dean Preston, Board of Supervisor, so he's going to come up. And what I want you to explain to us black people here, Dean, is what are you doing? What are you doing for black San Franciscans outside of District 5? What are you doing for black San Franciscans outside of District 5? Because for me, the Board of Supervisors can't do be solo. Our, our deficits are so vast that they can't be solo and only concentrate on black folks in their district. You got to work with all of us, right? So here, Dean, you have a few minutes to speak to that. Thank you so much, Felicia. Thank you to um, Wealth and Disparities, the black community, for, uh, for organizing this event. And it's really a privilege to be here with you all. Before I took office, I uh, represented people fighting eviction for, for 20 years. Fighting against real estate speculation and fighting against the machine that exists to profit off of displacing people, especially the black community from San Francisco. And we have to be, we have to acknowledge the incredible amount of activism and all the folks, so many of whom are here today, who have fought to still be in this city despite those pressures, despite the profits, despite the racism that is baked into every aspect of city government. It is absolutely structural and I will tell you, as someone serving as a supervisor in this building, I hear the word equity all the time. I hear rhetoric about racial equity. I hear people saying the right things. And then I see what our budget looks like. Then I see a recall of a black school board member. Then I see plans to roll out and unleash police on the disproportionately African-American homeless residents of the Tenderloin and other parts of the city. And I say, look at what we do, not what we say. I'm always happy to come talk to folks, but what matters is what I do when I'm doing my job. So to answer some of the questions, we, we fought for and got a tenant right to counsel in San Francisco and we fight every year to make sure that's funded. 80%, 80% of black residents of San Francisco who get served with an eviction notice are able to stay in their homes if they have a lawyer, if they have a right to counsel. So that's why the right to counsel program has one of, been one of our biggest priorities. We advocated in the budget priority, every district supervisor gets a bunch of money they can use in their district. Look at our ad backs. People talk about racial equity, look at what we funded. Pro programs disproportionately and overwhelmingly benefiting the Fillmore and the black community of the Fillmore, including seed funds, hundreds of thousands of dollars in seed funds for entrepreneurs who are trying to get started in the Fillmore, a program we'll be launching soon with OEWD. Look at the actual work done around the issues of over-policing in San Francisco, over-incarcerating and ruining not only individuals' lives, but families and generations. Look at the work there. Who's doing what? We partner with, my office partners with Mano, who you just heard from at the Public Defender's Office. We're looking for any way to partner with you to take on those issues. We took the lead at the Board of Supervisors in banning the knee and neck chokehold that killed George Floyd. We, we championed at the board with Shimon Wall, the only ones to fight back and call out and vote against a state of emergency that was gonna flood the streets with police recently. 
Again, a lot of rhetoric from a lot of people. Siobhan Walton and I were the only ones to vote against that. And we just introduced legislation, and to answer uh, Felicia's question, not just in District 5, we just introduced legislation to force disclosure of police misconduct records across the city. The city is on track to be decades behind where state law has ordered us to be in terms of disclosing records around policing. And the other thing is, when it comes to the budget, it's easy to talk about defunding police. We need to do it in our budget. I was the only member of the Board of Supervisors to vote against last year's budget because we didn't invest in social housing and because we doubled down on expanding law enforcement budgets. I also voted against the expansion of sheriff services, this idea championed by some of my colleagues that we should have sheriffs at every retail outlet. I don't buy it at all. The solution is not more and more police. And I want to say this, at a time when all of us are struggling, and especially the black community, with housing insecurity, with rising rent debt and other forms of debt, with unemployment, with, with income inequality, we also need to look at this rising tide during this uncertain time. The rising tide of fear-mongering, of anti-blackness, of crime hysteria, and of people pushing solutions like the war on drugs that have been tried and failed and have ruined communities and individuals' lives for decades. So my office and my approach is to try to have clarity on these issues, to try to push for big systemic change, and to work with all of you and get some new accountability, transparency in this building and fight for a change in San Francisco rather than just doubling down on what we've done in the past. So I want to end by just thanking, there's so many folks here who are doing that work every day, who are honoring Dr. King's legacy in your work every day and here in San Francisco. And please reach out, as Felicia often does, to let us know how we can be partners in this fight together. Thank you.